All right, so we're gonna take a quick tour around the inside of a sniper or an autococker. Um, what I have is I have one of my guns completely in pieces over here. Well, not completely, mostly in pieces over here. And I have one of my guns put together here. Um, internally, these guns are very similar. Body style is a little different on the outside. Reg design is a little different on the outside, but the guts are all the same. Uh, I'm gonna go through these guns in the order that the air flows through the gun. So, obviously you're screwing your tank in here into the ASA or the on-off. Um, this is an on-off. Crank that in, it's pushing that pin against the pin of the tank, allows air into the gun, uh, compressed air uh, or CO2. Goes through this macro line into this fitting here, into the bottom of the reg. Now the input location on the reg, this guy's uh, the reg off of my other um, sniper, same thing, air goes in the bottom, regulated down here, basically means it's uh, using uh, combined air pressure and spring pressure to keep it the output the same, air comes out the top. Same thing right here, air comes out the top into the ASA. Um, on the other body here, ASA is right here. There's a hole drilled up the, up the inside of the ASA, and it comes into the front of the body. All right. Now what I've got here is I've got the pieces laid out in order of how they sit inside the gun. This is the valve spring. It's going to sit right up here against the front. Okay. That's holding the valve shut. This is the valve. All right. This is a, a just a pretty straightforward valve system. Basically, as this little seal is pressed against this brass collar here, that keeps the air from coming through. The spring holds this shut. Additionally, the air pressure, since it's coming in through the ASA and it's pushing on this side, keeps the valve shut. Now, when I talk about sweet spotting a regulator, um, that means what you're doing is you're balancing the input pressure and this spring weight. You're trying to make that balance against how hard the hammer is hitting. We'll get to the hammer in just a second. So, this guy sits like this, right up here in the front of the gun. Okay, makes sense? There's a hole, there are two holes in the side of the valve. One is for the air to go through. Um, on this gun, the other one is uh, held in place by this little uh, jam nut here. Right there. Locking nut holds the valve in place. Okay? So we've got a hole in the bottom there. Um, this slot right here is where the sear engages the uh, hammer lug, and I'll show you that in a second. Now, on an autococker, you need this tool. This is a valve tool. You can make your own. It's basically just a, a drilled out Allen um, wrench. You've got this uh, nut that locks the, the valve in place, okay? This is this tool's nice because it, it keeps you from cross-threading. If you break, if you cross-thread this and you're gonna wreck the threads inside your gun. This nut sits on the back end of the valve, just like that, and holds it into the gun. So it's a, it's a secondary thing. You got this little set screw that comes up from the bottom. You've also got this jam nut that goes against the back of it. Put it on this tool like this. Once you've got your, your valve aligned the way you want inside the body, it's gonna sit right about there. And then you're gonna feed this guy in here and this is going to thread into the inside of the body. The ring around this is to keep it aligned with the, the hole drilled through the body. You screw that in. Um, I just like to go finger tight um, just to keep that in place. It doesn't tend to work itself out that easily. Okay. So airflow <clears throat> into the ASA, up through the regulator, into the ASA here, into the front of the gun. From there, the valve is going to sit in here, blocks the airflow. The airflow continues back along this way, and then Right back here, you can't see the hole on the inside, there's, there's a hole that goes between these two tubes, okay? Right behind this, uh, right behind this valve, when it pops open, so when the hammer comes and hits this valve, like this, the air is going to flow up here, through a hole drilled between the two tubes, and into the, um, into the body of the gun. You'll notice on the bolt, there's a hole at the bottom. So that bolt is sitting right in there. When it's in its closed position, this hole in the bottom lines up with the upper hole on the valve, like this. When this gets banged open, air goes up into your bolt and out the barrel of the gun. That's how the barrel fire. That's how the gun fires. Okay, behind the valve, I've got this assembled sort of the way it sits in the gun. Um, this is the hammer right here. Okay, this is your mainspring. This is what holds the hammer or what pushes the hammer forward. This is your IVG internal velocity adjuster, or internal velocity guide. This is what you're adjusting at the back of the gun when you take your big Allen wrench, put it in the back of the gun. When you're tightening this, you're squishing the spring harder. Okay, this spring is what pushes the uh, pushes the hammer into the valve. So this guy sits in here like this. Okay, this is the cocking rod. You've seen that sticking out of the back of the gun. Okay, that's what when you pull this back, it's going to lock. This little guy right here is the the um, the lug that sticks out of the bottom of the bolt. Let me show you this. Um, in the top of the body, this is a modification on the older ones. This is standard now. There's going to you're going to be able to put a one eighth inch Allen. Allen the wrench into here. What you're doing when you do that is you're dropping it down through the gun and into the top of this guy. Right now, what you can see is as you adjust this down, 
this little guy is going to stick further and further out of the um, hammer. Okay. Now what that's doing is when you're pulling back on this, it's going to pop past the sear. That's what's catching. That's what's holding your hammer back. Okay. That makes sense. So you got this little uh, lug sticking out of there. That's also how you adjust your where you where your trigger pull release is. Um, the the further up into this hammer it is, the lighter trigger pull, the shorter trigger pull. But obviously also if you if you do it wrong, it's not going to be enough to catch. So you got that lug there. Let me pull this out real quick. <clears throat> so hammer sits here. Mainspring is behind it. When you cock the gun, this is pulled back. You can see there's the slot. That's the amount of travel it has. This is pulled back, and the sear catches the lug. Okay. When you pull the trigger, hammer is released. It flies forward, and it hits the valve, opening the valve, allowing air to go up into the bolt. Okay. That's pretty straightforward. Um, I mean, it's a lot of parts, but it's not that terrible. <clears throat> this is the back block. Okay. This is what actuates. This is what uh, the top part of this holds the bolt. Okay. The pin. There's different locking mechanisms. All right. That means that it's created. It's making the bolt cycle when you're pushing back. In this case, on the pump arm. This little guy, this cocking rod, also goes through the back block. Okay. That's that's what you see sticking out of the back of an autococker. Pretty straightforward. These guys are in here like this. When you pull this back, since this guy is attached to it, it's going to come back too. That's how you cock your gun. Okay. So this back block holds those together. <coughs> Now, um, there's a lot of adjusting you can do with a gun with this many moving parts, um, but we're not really going to get into that. Timing it, there's a couple of great videos out there already out there about timing the autococker. Let me move these pieces aside and just, I'm just going to do this real quickly. I'm going to do a quick, I'm going to lay the pieces on top of this guy so you can see where they go. Pump arm. Oh yeah, one other real quick thing. This pump arm, same, I mean this is a different kit, but these are my return springs, just some little flimsy springs. They go inside here, okay. And the reason that they go inside there is that on the front of the gun, you got this long pump arm. This goes where the front block screw would normally be. On an autococker like this, you've got this big screw in the front. That's what holds this front block onto the gun. Okay, You're going to take that off, that whole front pneumatic block, and you're putting this guide rod in here um, when you're putting a pump kit on. So this pump kit slides over here. Okay, This rod goes to the back, which then, of course, attaches to the back block back block is what's going to run your bolt as well as your cocking rod. Now there's no internals in this obviously. As you're pushing back, it's pulling back, which remember it's moving this hammer back. When you get past the sear on the grip, that little guy right there, then you this guy's going to catch that 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 uh, sear lug is going to catch, okay? Then when you return this forward, this hammer this is this uh, cocking rod's going to stay back. When you pull the trigger, bang. It's going to fly forward and hit the uh, hit the bolt. I um, think that that's pretty much it. There's not a lot to these guys once you've taken them apart a few times. Um, you do need the special tool. You don't really need it. You can do it with an Allen wrench, but I don't like to because I don't want to strip out the inside of my gun. This is worth it instead of wrecking a body. Um, so here's about where the pieces are going to sit. Valve is right about there. Mainspring's up here. Or sorry, the valve spring's right there. Hammer goes right here. Mainspring behind it. The cocking rod is in there. The IVG on this guy is sitting right about here, but it's in this bottom tube. Okay. This jam nut is sitting right behind this bolt. Let's try right between the valve. This little guy is up into the bottom of the valve like that. The bolt is sitting right here on the top part. Hole down, obviously, so it gets to the, the vent. Pins through there. Um, pump arm and back block are right about there. Hope that makes sense. I know I've had a few questions from people about um, kind of what the guts of these do. If you have any specific questions on how to tune any of these pieces, let me know. Um, I'm not a believer in having to buy expensive parts. I think, you know, stock internals can make these guys function really nicely. If you balance your regulator input pressure and this spring, since they're on this side of the valve, you balance that with weight of the hammer and this spring on the other side of the valve, you can get really high performance even with the standard valve, especially on a pump because you're just not shooting that fast.